Hello and welcome back to our YouTube channel, Tanashi Katika Nyakati Ngumu, Research Perspectives. For those of you who have not heard any of my podcasts, my name is Rachel Main and I am an honours student studying urban and regional development at the University of Witwatersrand in Johannesburg, South Africa. This is chapter 3 of my podcast titled, If the City Were Human. last session we spoke about how the planning profession becomes activists for those who do not have a voice by using pub public participation as a tool in creating socially and economically just cities in South Africa. We also touched on the distrust in the urban planning field, the misuse of public participation and how planners are the advocates for those without a voice. If you missed the last podcast be sure to go back and give it a listen. Today's podcast is the second part of the series, The People Are the City. This podcast will refer to the anagram in Chapter 1, Our Planners are the Doctors of the City, and will explore the different types of planners in the planning profession and the methods in which planners use. Just like there are various types of doctors in the field of medication, there are plenty of different types of urban planners in the planning field. As discussed in the last podcast, if you were to ask an urban planner what type of planner they would they are or would like to be, the answer will often be an advocate planner. But what is an advocate planner and what does advocacy planning entail? Well, advocacy planning is a theory of urban planning that was formulated in the 1960s by a planner and a lawyer named Paul Davishoff. The advocacy planning paradigm was formulated to answer critical questions such as who speaks for the poor, who should planning serve and who is the client and lastly who are the stakeholders. Davidsoff was concerned that planning initiatives and decision making regarding a neighbourhood were based with very little or no representation of the residents, the people affected by the decisions made. There is a need for a mediator because in the end of the day, how would a resident in these neighbourhoods be equipped to understand and take part in the planning processes? It would be like assuming an urban planner can perform surgery like a doctor or surgeon. It is impossible and that is why planners should be the professional represent pre representation of the community. The fundamental values of advocacy planning are social justice and equity. This planning paradigm's goal of, pla of the planning process is to determine many alternative scenarios based on the stakeholder's interests and pick the best possible scenarios that encompass the values of advocacy planning. An advocate planner is an urban planner that serves that serves the groups in society that are unskilled and lack the knowledge to take their own planning decisions. There are 15 types of planners in the field, excluding an advocate planner. However, these 16 types of planners can be grouped into four categories. The first category I will look at is as planners, as reformers, because advocate planners belong to this group. 
However, for the purpose of this podcast, I'll keep the explanation of the various types of planners short and sweet. Planners as reformers. The anarchist planner is an urban planner that believes that professionals should not interfere with the livelihoods and choices of others. These types of planners believe that people should make their own decisions and learn from them. The activist planner is an urban planner that emphasizes with the people in the city and speaks for them. Yes, for them. Not with them or with their input, but solely for them. The last type of plan in the category is the visionary planner. The visionary planner does not really concern concern themselves with, pres with the present, but rather with the future. These types of planners are not phased with the steps or possibility in implementing a plan or strategy, but looks at the final product in isolation. The next category of planners I will explore are the planners as, as, as administrators. These are the local planners, the bureaucrats, the planners as politicians, and the entrepreneur planner. A local planner is a planner that experiences powerlessness at a local level due to the politics planner relationship. These planners often feel hopeless in creating a difference. The bureaucrat planner refers to the planners that function as bureaucrats and link knowledge to action. Much like the bureaucrat, the planner as a politician is simply a planner that becomes a politician. The entrepreneur planner is a profit orientated planner. In my opinion, I think that to a degree, every urban planner in the entrepreneur planner is an entrepreneur planner because in the end of the day, we do live in a capitalist world where income is vital for survival. Planners as systemizers are structure orientated planners that suppress the emotions and feelings to keep the facts and plan based only on the facts. The observer planner is a planner that takes a look at science and data collection and uses it as a tool in planning outfits, output. The empiricalist planner is one that focuses on knowledge and empirical data and often engages themselves in ways to find and collect more information. The next type of systemizer planner are the theorist planners. These planners to be, t tend to be specialists in their field but often suffer from single-minded ideologies that are theories. The last kind of systemizer planner are the designer planners. These planners are the planners that focus on urban design and provide the foundations to design the city. Finally we have the last group of planners which are the synthesizers. Human strategist Human strategists use a weakness, opportunity, strength analysis as a tool to achieve changes in the organizational structure and behavior. They, walk, they work towards minimizing human potentialities and satisfaction. The transdisciplinary educator are the educators for the next set of urban planners, where the education, educator knows and understands the different disciplines, types of planners, like these 16. The logic functionalist is a type of planner that strives for a one-fits-all solution, which they would call the best answer to the problem. The last type of planner are the philosophic synthesizers. These are the planners that imagine and create the philosophies that, and, that introduce a new direction for planning and so, societal guidance. And there you have it, the 16 types of urban planners. But remember, a planner does not necessarily conform to one type, but could encompass attributes of multiple. It is also important to note that these, to note that these types of planners in the world are not limited to just these 16. If the planner, or if you are a planner or you are studying planning, leave a comment in the comment section below and tell me what types of planners you are or aspire to be. We are already familiar with the advocacy planning paradigm, so let us familiarize ourselves with a few others. 
I will not be looking at all the different planning approaches because we do not have the time. And honestly, we only really need to look at the planning approaches that are specific to urban planning in contemporary South Africa. I am not saying that the others are not used. I just find that the following approaches are more relevant to the planning profession in South Africa. First we have incremental planning. This planning paradigm is a less scientific technique that follows steps but utilizes the planner's intuition and experience to identify and evaluate a few alternative solutions. This approach uses alternative solutions that differ marginally from existing solutions and it is for this reason that I do not think this, para this paradigm is the best fit for finding solutions in South African cities. However, I do think that planners need to use certain aspects of this approach. Aspects such as using plan experience to alter solutions and evaluating solutions at every point it is carried out. And adjusting the next steps based on what the planner feels necessary. Going back to the anagram, are planners the doctors of the city? When a doctor treats their patients for diseases and injury, there is no fixed or concrete method in doing so. For example, when a doctor treats a patient for stage 2 cancer, there is no standard treatment which is used to treat all kinds of cancer at different stages. The doctor needs to use his or her experience and decide on the first step. If chemo, radiation or surgery would be the correct way to go, if the step is to do chemo and radiation, how much and how long is the next question to ask? The medical profession emphasizes and acknowledges that every cancer is different and therefore needs adjusted courses of treatment. So why don't planners understand this? Why is there this an assumption that a couple of predetermined solutions will fix all the challenges faced within a city? Urban planners need to evaluate and use their own experience to adjust or even create new and more effective ways in their career. The next, kind, the next planning approach I will be looking at is partitionary planning, which puts the planner, which puts the people first in hopes of developing socio-economic strategies that in South Africa combat extreme levels of informality and marginalized settlements. This planning approach also uses public participation to shape projects and policies for public by public opinion. This approach is built on the fact that South African cities are becoming more and more diverse and increasingly suffers from high levels of urban segregation, fragmentation and poor standards of living. Thank you for listening. Please like this video and hit that subscribe button below. Please feel free to engage in the comment section and share my video. Just a reminder that these podcast videos are a requirement to fulfill my degree and therefore it is important for me to acknowledge the work and theories I use to create the video and podcast content. These will be listed below.